Hi, it's Mike Greenberg, and welcome to my new podcast, I'm Interested, is the name of it. And that is because I think interesting is my favorite word. Um, if you think about what things are worth doing, I, I've always said in, in, in this business of broadcasting that I've been in for all these years, I tell people when they ask me who I'm rooting for, what I'm rooting for, what I'm hoping happens, I always say I'm in the interesting business. I need interesting things to happen in the world of sports. And so I'd like to tell you a little bit about how it is that we came to do this podcast. Oh, good, good, good. I want to hear it. <laughs> Let's take a quick pause here for a second. <laughs> what, <laughs> what, 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 what human being talks like I don't that? think we can blame John Skipper, the druggie, for this. He's gone, right? Yes. The, so he, someone he, else at ESPN thinks that's a good idea. <sighs> well, he's losing an hour off Get Up, so they have to make him do something to compensate for the lack of work. That's that just stick doing. him in the studio and let him yap away. Isn't that the, the genesis of lots of podcasts that some boss is trying to make their yes. employee do something? Yes. Yeah, do a podcast. Yes. No one's going to listen to right. it. That's why the genesis of tun- tunnel vision. Right. Yeah, that's what happens. <laughs> that's your favorite word, tunnel. Yes. Java you, with Jerry. Do you think people? Do you think people really go up to Mike Greenberg all the time and ask him who he's rooting for in a game? This is Kirk and Callahan Tunnel Vision. They do they ask him what his favorite word is? What's your favorite word, Mike? <laughs> because ever, I think interesting is my favorite word. Oh, what's your second I don't favorite think I've word? I've ever heard what's fifth? that question. Like I've heard favorite lots of things: favorite team, player, whatever, ice cream. What's your favorite word? Matter. Who even has a favorite word? This guy is so awful. And the irony is he's the least interesting person in the world. There's nothing interesting about him. Uh, yes, he's true. Unless, well, I mean, I unless think it comes, yeah. uh, comes clean about mm-hmm. how he's been able to stay up so late at <laughs> night. I think there may be some demons, but the Greenberg who you want to see on TV is not interesting. Can you see that moment when they lift the cup? It's, it, it chokes me up to this day. What? It chokes him up? Yes, what does? Stanley Cup being hoisted above the players. Oh, makes I agree. Yeah. So he's going to go one on one with Amy Trask. God, I can't and like wait. people across America are going to spend time in their day, like sitting down and listening to that. And and I thought to myself, I would like to do that. I would like to choose a selection of people that I find interesting, and just have a conversation with them about the things about them that interest me, which is basically what Letterman is doing. And um, so I suggested that Letterman and delightfully Netflix show. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> which, which nobody, nobody is watching. That. Nobody is watching that. Uh, nobody. And most of them come from the sports world. We're going to start with Amy Trask. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. That's his leadoff guest. <laughs> Big swing and first one. Yes, your leadoff was Portnoy, right? Your I would, podcast. Your, yes, which got to number one on iTunes. I would say if I'm Mike Greenberg, I would say you know what I'm going to have on as my first guest. We're going to have a real conversation about what happened. A real nut, Mike Golick. That's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about why we don't like each other. We're going to have it out for real. No pretend, no TV, not have our families on at the end and kiss each other. We're going to talk about why you don't like me, why don't I, I, why don't I like you. That's I, what I, I, I think it's obvious why Mike Golick doesn't like him. <laughs> well, you know, maybe Golick's not that interesting, though. Uh, I think that's mysterious. I mean, isn't that, wouldn't that make sense? Oh, I mean, the reason... I mean, Amy you, Trask is no-brainer. The reason you, you don't like, off for later. The reason you don't like someone you work with on the air is you have these conflicts. These You butt heads. And I'm sure Golick... I don't butt, no, I, yeah, I don't so much talk you, about you would it. agree that that's how it works. Maybe I mean I haven't experienced it, but yeah. So Golik had to listen to this this, uh, this douche, douche nozzle for years. Say, I want to talk to Amy Trask in a long form, and he must have said, "What are you talking about? That's terrible." I want to have a, a show like Letterman's Netflix show. Who was the CEO of the Raiders forever, and is someone that I've known for a really long time, and is one of the most interesting and intelligent and thoughtful. Uh, that's and what I want connected Thoughtful. and insightful people in the world of football. So we will start the football season with a conversation with her in no particular order, but among ooh, the ooh, other hold guests. On, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get, I've had some issues since I started uh, this medicine, but guess who's coming back to life listening to this? Little Kirky. He is <laughs> ready to go. Oh, wow. I, is... I'm going to guess. Let's guess who's next guest. I'll say Rob Manford. Ooh, no, that's... Adam Silver. He's more oh, thoughtful. Oh, yeah, Adam Silver's Adam, Twitter he's likes. more thoughtful, yes. I'm going to say, say, ooh, I'm trying to think of, like, his world. I'm going to say, fingers crossed, Joe Tessator. <laughs> it's actually <laughs> Kiara Mia is the next one. Is that what you got? That'd be good. See, that would be a good guess. Who is a pig on Twitter? Well, you, oh, are, you are God. rough. You are rough. <laughs> She's a lovely woman. I don't want her to block me. The either. things she does on Twitter. Well, what do you want? She has a body part and she uses it. <laughs> she has... <laughs> As many uses. Uh, let me just say, I, I'm no. going to say Taylor Twelman too. Why not? Well, that, no, no, he's not famous enough. Amy Trask is famous. 
That's his first she, guess. She's female in the NFL. Oh, that's true. Oh, good point. This, she's, you know, who else? Um, she's, he's going to want like groundbreaking, like it's going to be some famous. Elsie Granderson. Yeah, gonna it's going to be some famous yeah, lesbian right. or some famous transgender. Right. Yeah, that's true. Okay, let it play. Who else has he got? Do during the course of the fall will be Bob Costas, um, one of the great sports broadcasters. Yeah, we know he is, Mike. Candidly, one of the great broadcasters of any sort in America. No, oh, hold on, hold on, hold uh, on. Don't be so candid. If you're gonna be, right. let's, I know it's a podcast. You can say what who you writes, want. But who take writes it for easy. the New York Times that he'll want to have? He'll have that, that guy that writes media for Sandemir. Richard Sandemir. Yes, yes Sandemir. He could have him on, yeah. Or have, um, who would he have? Bruce on? Arthur. Oh, Chuck Todd? Chuck Todd, I can yes. see them being friends. He's interesting. I think interesting is my favorite word. <laughs> Who else? That's funny. Costas. Whenever he comes on TV, my kids always say, Dad, there's your idol, because I've described him that way so many times. He's someone I look up to greatly. We will talk about his career, and we'll talk about the whole concept of sticking to sports. Hold on. Is he still is about Costas? Yeah. worse than Honestly, if, you just, if you say your favorite word, isn't like the top ten of your favorite words any word you can't say on the radio? Yes. I mean, he's course. on a podcast. Obviously, his favorite word is, I would guess if he's a guy that age. Right. It's one of the words that I, I say all the time, but you can't say on the radio. Right. The N-word. <laughs> I don't think that's Greenberg's favorite word. But maybe I don't know. That's what I heard. Yeah, I've heard that. But you know, um, we will talk oh. to Michelle Roberts, who is the head of the NBA Players Association. Who's that? There is a dynamic that you. exists right now in pro basketball that is just remarkable, and I is think Greenberg she's an incredibly is trying to be boring here. Is this fake? Is he trolling <laughs> Michelle you? Roberts? I mean, it would be great if he did it like yeah, like Sasha Barrett. Like it was just a complete parody where you had Michelle Roberts on. Who's the head of the Players Association? For the WNBA or, or <laughs> NBA. Has oh, to be the, I think she NBA, had the NBA. Right. Yeah. Yeah, there has to be some kind of Kaepernick guy involved we're somewhere. Gonna have, we're going to have Manga on. That would right. be good. <laughs> Jared Who else? Remy. Who else? Manga. chip that she has and the players have. With the people who run basketball, I can't wait the owners of the stuff. teams, and Adam wait. Silver and the people who um, who operate the NBA front office, I think is vital and important in our world of sports today and instructive, and I want to get to the bottom of how it is they've done that. Oh, God. So I'm looking forward to talking to her. Instructive. We will go outside of the sports world a little oh, bit. Oh, 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 whoa, 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 Hold on, hold on. I think you're on to something with the Chuck Todd's. That or, seems like a douchey friend. A Jake Tapper. Yeah, Jake, Jake Ta- Tapper would be right. good. Acosta, good, maybe? Good oh, no, Acosta's too... Too edgy. I see, I don't think you want to talk Trump with anybody, though. That's true. No, let's just talk media. See, I think they'll go into in the entertainment world. Um, um, Wynton Marcellus. <laughs> no, Always been one. Is he s- one of his favorite musicians? Yes. <laughs> All right, go ahead. A little bit among my guests in that area will be Harlan Coben. Ah! Of my work over the years know that I've tried to write books. I've written a few myself. I love to read, and Harlan Coben is one of my favorite authors. He only has 70 million books in print. He writes thrillers that are, are just incredibly yes! fun, and I'm assuming many of you are familiar with What an work. instinct. What a Every terrible instinct for good radio. A good podcast. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, he, he got one right. You know? We're also Blind gonna squirrel talk to, finds a nut. We're also going right to talk there. to my friend Brad Faxon <laughs> and Harry Mannion. <laughs> Shut up. Harlan's oh, good. A conversation with Brad Faxon. You just have to know how to interview him, man. I could do it. You could do it. He can. <laughs> Who else? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> he loves to read. Oh, that is so great. Okay, who else? Go We're going to have Walt Frazier as one of my <laughs> guests as we kick off the basketball season. Walt Frazier. And um, I don't need to tell you who Clyde Frazier is, um, but Did there you? are a lot of reasons why I think he is as important today as he was when he played. And I really look forward to you <laughs> hearing the reasons why in our conversation and what I can tell you about well, Walt Frazier, like among other things. Business, man. I am in. <laughs> Mike Greenberg. That's like a Hawkins tape. That sounds so awful. It does. He sounds so upset. He makes six million dollars a year. He's gonna have Michelle Roberts and Walt Frazier and Harlan Coben. <laughs> Harlan Coben. <laughs> Is that it? Walt Frazier? Did you name anyone else? No, that's, that's it. it. That was it. So what's his what lineup? lineup? Amy Trask. Michelle Roberts, Bob Costas, Arlen Coben. <laughs> Frazier. <laughs> Frazier. Uh What's wrong with a, that? This is a guy who's kind of famous. Like, you can get people on. What would you think of that Harlan Coben interview? 
I'm I'm bored to tears by it. But. <laughs> hey, I, I thought it was a little shocking that he dropped a dropped a swear in there. I know that was weird. Kirk had just sat down, and I all of a sudden I heard the. <laughs> I thought it was uh, pretty exciting. <laughs> what was? <laughs> doing oh that's great though i can't when does it drop as they say oh i don't know if there's a date but i think in september early september i'm gonna guess we're gonna have that cut up no that will be joe tess and greenie's podcast oh, will be big oh, examples. i can't wait for joe tess i can't wait for joe green has to get joe tess on the prod if you haven't heard joe tess is the new play-by-play guy on monday nights and he is a raconteur oh, he is he is he is a man about town Interested in many, many things. He might have been down at Blue Hill Avenue running numbers. I'm Praise, just saying. I don't want, you know. Praise every morning. Did he? Was he into gambling? Uh, he's not going to talk about that. <laughs> not going to talk about that. But would you like some more prosciutto? <laughs> I'm a tsunami. <laughs> you were the tsunami. What do you say we end the talking season and dig into some ball? Yeah. Oh, God, what a boy. He changed douche. the game. <laughs> I'm fired up for Monday Night Football because of Joe Tess and, and oh. Jason Witten. All right, an hour from now, we're going to have uh, Eddie Dominguez on. who wrote this book, this Ortiz book, which is which seems pretty good. We're going to talk to him. Plenty to get to here in an hour or two. We get back. 617-779-7937. Uh, and you see Ben Bowen's story today. I, I did. Who knew that Belichick was, you know. Uh, you just have to ask the right questions. That's it. You know, and Jim Nance, is, Jim Nance estimates he's talked to him over 90 times. Yeah. <laughs> What a, what a loser. Uh, it is pathetic. And they admit he doesn't talk about the game or the players or anything important. He but if you ask him about, about Jim Brown. Ask him about or, Delaware lacrosse. Yeah, Curly he's Lambeau. All he's ready to talk. <laughs> Jesus. All right, what else we got an hour or two? We have headlines as well. What else, Chris? Well, we have headlines. We have some uh, fresh Marty Walsh sound. He was asked about his trips around the country and what he's been up to. Is a good answer? Uh, I think it's um, worth hearing. Good. Do we have that? That that loathsome uh, Chicago Cardinal talking about oh, the Pope? Oh, God. You thought, the, you thought the scandal involving these Catholic priests was uh, already uh, 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 just maddening. You haven't heard anything yet. He's got his priorities in order. I appreciate it. This is the most sickening thing I've ever heard from a uh, member of the clergy. Not surprising. I'm not surprised at the arrogance of these guys. The tone deafness. It's incredible. All All right, we'll do that and more, hour two, which is next. Harlan Coben. It is in bookstores (laughs) as of today. Harlan Coben's latest called Fool Me Once. You can uh, denigrate him as a guest or an interview, but you can't denigrate him as an author. He is great. I recommend all his books. That's that's a funny moment. The guy that you promote all the time is is on Mike Greenberg's idea of a great guest is your idea of a great guest. Yes, yes. Oh, I didn't you say could it was be a great you, guest. You could be on Get Up soon. You could be on Get Up soon if you play, or you could be a guest on Greenberg's He's a podcast. Great author. See, you you are so stubborn, so closed minded. You won't even read one of his books. I don't read his book purposely because you and John read. His I know. Books. Well, I, you read his. Books. That's that's wrong. He had some should, twist though, didn't he? Didn't I he read things as... you recommend to me all the time. Good you morning, never Mr. read. Coben, how are you, sir? You never read anything I recommend. You don't listen to any song all, I recommend. That's not, not true. I read stuff. You, you, that's not true at all. You, you, name one book you read on my recommendation. You gave me that Dan Jenkins book. I read it. A Man Called Ove. I read that, too. Dan Jenkins' book. I don't yeah, remember. a couple of years ago. Actually, about. I noticed I just still had it in the house. It's a collection of all his stuff over the years. You gave that to me. I read it. I did? Yes. I don't remember that. I read your... Well, I read the Ann Coulter everyone, book everyone you gave me. You did not. Yes, I did. If you read Ann Coulter, that gave the... I can tell did. you the title of the book. I read Adios you, America. I read that book. Which is a great book. I agree. I told you it was a great book. You didn't Page tell me that. Page 131. Yes, I did. She on the radio to get her you, own voice. How can you not... Hold on. I want to hear this. What was that? Page 131, she flipped on the radio to get her own voice out of her head and replace it with whatever inanity was on the morning drive. People who host morning radio uh, programs cannot believe how funny they are. I took that as a personal That's insult. True. He's right about that. He was good at going page by page. That's yes. what you needed. When you're in the car, the book the just bo- came out that day. And the That's book, what you wanted and to not hear. one person had read it yet because the book isn't even out yet. Dino would say on page 247. What was the question he asked him that time? It was the end of the, each chapter? <laughs> yes. He said... Uh, it, it, at the end of every chapter, you can't stop reading. You just have to read the next chapter. And he asked Harlan if he did that on purpose. Nah, just by mistake. And Harlan said, so Harlan was a, is a good guy and a I'm good I'm sure he's a good Take it easy. It's if funny you to read him and be liked Harlan him. Coben's next book, which is already into 100 pages. He did. He donated to the, the Jimmy what? Fund. He donated to the Jimmy Fund. Someone sure. could, if they donate. I'm sure he's a great guy. They, it's funny they that you like him certain, and Mike Greenberg They gave him. like 10 grand to the Jimmy Fund. He put their name in the book. That's great. That's pretty good. Yeah, you and Greeny can, can hang out with him. And yes, Dale, you guys all like. Among my guests in that area will be Harlan Coben. <laughs> Greeny, Greeny says he's re- he's written a few books. 
He wrote that book, that kids book we saw. In yeah. Oh, Never that's right. It. That's not. That's a. Count. I'm sure he wrote some hard o radio host. He wrote. Book, a, right? He wrote a hard o radio host, and then he wrote a novel as well. Oh Jesus! Oh my God, he did. Yeah, that I'll get the title. Can we get so can awful? We, can we can we download that? Yes. Let's be, the Tangway's books are better than than Greenies. I've read that? Tangway's books. I don't know if that's possible. Tangway can't. You've seen him on Twitter. He can't write. Right. My father's wives, a novel by Mike Greenberg. Oh Jesus! What? I, that's the title. His dad was like a bigamist. It's a novel. I know, but I'm saying that's a, in, in the novel, his, the, the character's dad is a bigamist. It just sounds so awful. He's staring at me. I felt his eyes when Vivian and I turned the corner for home. So what's it going to be? Flattered or freaked out? Well, I do look smoking hot in my finely aged UMass sweatpants and my dad's black knitted hat. He says it makes me look like a thug. I certainly don't look like a girl this morning, or a straight one for that matter. Plus, this baggy fleece has my boobs, which are pretty amazing <laughs> MIA. <laughs> I think this is a grabber for later. Whatever day, happened? Gary. Whatever happened to that guy, Gary Tangway? He used to be here like all the time. Make us laugh. Don't you miss that that Tangway? I, I miss that Tangway. The Tangway who didn't care one bit yeah, what anyone what thought about. I don't know, the whole world has lost I mean, its mind. You know, we like to think that we're thick, thin, thick skinned, and 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 I think we are. But nobody was thicker skinned. Tangway, he didn't even listen to people who insulted him, who hated him. True, didn't affect him at all, which was so unusual for a TV guy. There aren't a lot of guys like that. I would actually, you know, I need to give Tomasi a lot of credit. Tomasi has a pretty thick skin. Yes, he does. You got to say that. I mean, you know, he ran away from us for a while, but he has a thick skin. Go ahead. What were you going to say? My father's wives. Here's the real heart of the story. Synopsis. Jonathan Sweetwater has been blessed with money, a fulfilling career, great kids, and Claire, his smart, gorgeous, sophisticated wife. But there's one thing Jonathan never had. A relationship with his father. Oh, oh God! It's <laughs> a Kirk oh, Sounds like a hit right home. Hit right at home for you, Kirky. I had a relationship with my old man, so that that's what it is. So, so Jonathan Sweetwater. If I'm, I'm gonna take a big leap here, sounds like you might be Greenberg to me. Ooh, yeah. Oh, oh, we didn't have a relationship with his father. Well, I don't know. Oh, no, he had one, but it was complicated. It was complicated. Yeah, yeah. I, I he hooked me in again. The guy's amazing. <laughs> What's it called? My father's wives. Yep. I think interesting is my favorite word. <laughs> I can't do the favorite word. Can we put a poll up? I guess you can't of what your favorite word is. What's your favorite word? I, 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 yeah, no, I mean. How about do you have a favorite word? That's not a great poll. <laughs> no. What would most people say? Like they would the say the F word. word is, well, if you couldn't use the F What's word. What's the word you've used most in your life? It has the F to word. Be, other than like the. I would say the F word. That's in the top three. No question. And the an F. Right. Right? Yes. In the about an hour word. ago, I put up a poll on Twitter. <laughs> Was an hour ago? So, Dale... Did, oh, look, Ken, did, you, Ken's not, you're not a big swear, are you? I, in high school, not, I've curbed it. Yeah. Chris is not yeah, really His either. wife doesn't like Not it. really, no. No. You are. Me either. <laughs> I don't hard to swear at all. No, not on the phone I at have all. Great, my greatest skill is turning it off when I go on the air. I don't swear on the air, unlike you. I can control it. No, but I do it on purpose, though. I can certainly control but no, it. No, you not always. Sometimes you just let it slip out. Andy, be ready. It's Greeny's a, a swearer. He swears all the time. Oh, he definitely. Oh, does. But such a great word, though. Of course. Such the a greatest, useful. It's know. the greatest noun, the greatest verb, the greatest adjective. The adjective is really where it's at. It's the greatest best. Ever, everything. Yes. So why can't everyone just say it's a great word? Let's put it. Let's just have it in. Uh, it's a good question. Do you swear in front of your kids now? They're old enough or no? Of course. You do it in front of your daughter, too? Yeah. Did you do it when they were like 10? Yeah. You did or no? I don't know. Not as much. There's a certain age where you can just do it, right? Yes, there's a certain age where they do it. Oh, Which really? Is, yeah. That's When that happens, you go, wow. That's not an issue for you? No. Okay, I don't know. I mean, they don't do it as much as I do. Well, it's not possible. No. Not possible. No. But hey, that's you interesting. Got a problem I with find that? that interesting. Do I swear too much for you? I just think it's interesting. I you find things... Really pisses me off, too. I just oh, find that things, that interesting, your favorite no. word? I just find certain things interesting, that's all. And the things that interest me in the world, like Michelle Roberts and Amy Trask and Bob Costas. <laughs> I, I can't think of, you know, Bob, to get Bob Costas on the record and talking is going to be unbelievable. Oh, it's going to be like so an talk hour about the, and a half the long. A, ABA, the ABA and the St. Louis Spirits. And I'm, I, I, You're more of a podcast guy than I am. But, I mean, I sometimes... you're guest on podcast panels. I mean, you know, that's right. true. Yeah, you're an expert. Yeah. But, like, two of my favorite Talk guys, my, two of my favorite pundits are Greg Gutfeld and Ben Shapiro. And so the other day, there was nothing to listen to. I I, I think I was going running. And yeah. I, I said, I'm going to check this out. It's like an hour long. It was boring as hell. And sometimes it can be really boring. There's no and, doubt. And Gutfeld is funny as hell on, on TV and on, on his monologues, but he wasn't funny. It was just... Tedious. Yeah, you have to have some. I agree, and I'm not. I do plenty of lousy ones, but you kind of. They weren't swearing. Yeah, that's the thing. You got to have the right guest on, the right mood. I mean, if you get like a 
Minahan and Portnoy or a Greenberg and Roberts. You get that sort of dynamic. You're off to the races. Right. If you're a media person out there who does a podcast, please don't get your panties in a bunch. I probably haven't listened to it. I've... Oh, no. Okay. Ooh, off, off, off the handle. He didn't that. listen to mine. I'm gonna, if he doesn't listen to television. He's as boring as freaking Greenberg, though. Yeah, but it, he's, he does it for the same reason. He make It's profitable. It works. Well, I know. But I don't think in real life he's that way. He just, you know, his character is... Playing it down the middle, boring, sporty. Right. I mean, he roots for people when they to die. Other than that, you know, that's it. Right. But that's when he gets in trouble. Yes. No, no, no more. No. Those. I think those days are over. Does Greenberg have that side, that evil side, like you do? And I don't know. I've heard, heard he's not great to those around. Yeah, I've heard he's a comp- I, I We saw him. I don't know if you were there. I saw him a couple of Super Bowls ago, and he seemed like an a hole. Golick, by the way, we saw him at that. Remember, we were in yeah. the Mexican place, and With he seemed kids. like a good guy. Yeah, he was drinking beer with his kids. See, I'm on totally on Team Golik after Me too. being exposed to Greenberg here. Golik's probably a decent guy who just you know. Yeah, and his son to... was laughing at your jokes, so you, that's all it took. You looked right. over, and his son was laughing he at some me... stupid thing you said. Correct. That's all. It's important. That's all you needed. Yep. Now you came like... over. He said hi to us. I'm a Mike Golik Jr. fan. Yes, I like guys like been. that. Obviously, he had a fake name in the business, and then now he's famous. He worked for it. That's true. The best podcast ever. You not just by you by anyone was the Kareem Abdul Jabbar one. That was a good one. The analysis of a bad. <laughs> the, if you haven't heard it, can they still listen to it I or think, is it gone? I don't know. Yeah, I'll find it. Is it in the ether? It's like your interview with uh, with uh, Jen Royal. Like, yes, we gone, gone. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 sock puppet, kill it. But the analysis of a bad podcast where you actually interrupt yourself and talk about how bad it is. Right. That was friggin' great. I don't know why do people, that again. Should, people should, well, I have to do a podcast for that to happen. And you were talking about how you really enjoyed the book and you'd stop and just go, okay, let's be honest. Would I you do that? Would book. you say, freshman, you know, you've got to sit this one out? That would be a question, by the way. If anyone's paying attention, if, you, if you're in your car right now ranking the questions that suck, that is a f- dog. F- like, I don't have anything to ask. What the f- I want to get to race question. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's you analyzing yourself doing a podcast interview of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. See, my mistake was... humorless. My mistake was... I know, but the irony is he's humorless, but yet you could argue was in the funniest movie ever made. True. I mean, I don't... I, but I, I, why I, did, why I, didn't he do that more? Why did I don't he... know. I, but I put that movie in the top ten. He's one of my ten funniest movies. And he has some funny scenes. Oh, he's it's great. It's not like he's just a straight man. He's like one of the best scenes in the movie. He grabs a kid by the shirt and he's talking about, you know, you, you Walton and Lanier drag... He admits he's, he's actually Kareem Abdul-Jabbar pretending to be an airline pilot. And the first question I asked him was, when you read the script for Airplane, because I always wondered that. Did you know yeah. it was going to be funny? Because probably doesn't read that funny. And what was his answer? Uh, uh, I thought, oh boy, we're, we're in you serious can read trouble. It in the here. Book. We're in, book was great. Oh, what? The book was really good. How much of it did you read? Uh, zero pages. It's like the. It's like Imus. You know, every day Imus would have oh, another yeah, author gotta, on yeah, and say, yeah, oh, I yeah. really enjoyed the book. It's like 800 pages right. long. Yeah, we get Doris Kearns going Doug, on today. Douglas Brinkley on. Right. And we're going to talk to him about some book that you know Imus didn't read one word of. Not oh, no a question. Word. Oh, yeah. Great book uh, written you on. Blah, blah, blah. And he had some intern write up some questions for, for whoever. Doug, for uh, right. McCullough. Robert David Carroll's McCullough. got his new book on LBJ on here. It's a great book. Right? I read it. If you so ever I'm went back. On it, I was talking to you. If you went back and listened to Imus shows, you wouldn't believe how bad they were. You know? I But I yes. But I would say that, like, for me, like, late 80s, early 90s Imus. When Bream was on all the time and Bernie was crazy, they weren't they, on enough. I know, but they they those sat guys, out hours. Those guys literally funny, hours. Those they guys didn't were funny, participate. Though. They weren't allowed to participate in interviews. Right. Well, same with me when I started here. Right. Which was you know that's the way we should have kept it. Wolfie said to me, he said, "This John and Jerry are at their best with long form interviews." I yes, said, we I should said, if, we, if we still did that. You know, <laughs> who'd you have on Monday? <laughs> <laughs> Any problem who plays with Maya it? in the movie? Uh, I see Julia Roberts. What do you guys? Think? Yeah, that's yeah, pretty I, good. No, no. Yeah. What's wrong with that? Because who the hell's Maya? People in the car saying, who's Maya? I don't know. It was a big deal at the time. <clears throat> okay. That's fine. I like I like Harlan, too. You would like him. He's a really good guy. I like him. Guy. He's a nice guy. I don't, I, and I, he's a great If I, in novelist. the course of the Kirk and Callahan show, which is coming up on our two-year anniversary, Correct. by the way, which we should celebrate, because I don't think there's going to be a third one. I'm coming up on my 21st anniversary. Think well, the we, know we, know that's, we know that's going to be ignored. <laughs> well, um, if I ever said to you, Chris, don't book Harlan Coleman. You have not. You know, is it understood that you're not to book Harlan Coben? I would be fearful of my job security yeah, if I booked Harlan Coben. Simple as that. We have Harlan Coben. I would have Harlan on for ten minutes, but you won't read his book just because I like it. You won't read it, right? That's stupid. I agree, but I'm crazy, he's like, right? He's I'm like, nuts. I'm wild. Yes, you're, you're looking crazy. for sympathy, like uh, 
Danielle Michelle Trotter, Trotter said. said. Don't say your name correctly, okay? I'm She's sorry, Danielle, Danielle Trotter. Trotter. I know, you're not happy on, about this. Oh, I'm upset. It was on Comcast. She took Casey Smith's job. Yep. It looks like Casey Smith just aged a few years. That's not what you said That's not an yeah. insult. She's an older Casey Smith. I don't even know if she's older or not. Uh, she, Of course she is. She blocked me. She didn't block you. You're the one who she ripped on her me. looks. She's going to block me I don't me understand now. it. But you called her a nobody. I don't remember that. But well, that's not that bad. Well, I'm asking. If people call in right now, who's Danielle Trotter? They would know she is. So Daniel what? Trotter went right back at us, which we like on Absolutely. Twitter. She's welcome. You want to reach you're, out? She's you're, welcome to join said us. You're looking for Good. sympathy because, you know, you this little suicidal thoughts. <laughs> right. Um, you were looking for sympathy. <clears throat> I definitely was. And now you turn and you bully her. She says, "That's you got to be better. Oh. Hashtag be better. I'll get to work on that. Thanks, Dave. And that was liked by, by Trenny, that tweet? That is correct. Hurtful. So hurtful. So what? So she's upset. She's thin-skinned, though. She's blocked me on Twitter. Yes. She hasn't blocked me yet. I'm probably be better. Coming. Be better. I'm just saying her show stinks. That's all. I'm sorry. If that's bullying, I'm trying to help her out. Do a better show. Your show's being watched by nobody. Kirk should have known better. Nobody knows who she is. We're trying to help her out. I know. We're raising her profile. <clears throat> but she seems like she's part of that Abby Chin, trendy, humorless, like angry Comcast world. She actually said on the air that she doesn't like to criticize people. <laughs> <clears throat> Or doesn't like the what did she say? Doesn't like to have. Like, well, she told Drellick that, right? I mean, not Drellick. Reamer. Jesus, Reamer that. Oh, that wasn't on the air? Right. What did Drellick tell you yesterday? Oh, um, <laughs> something else. Yeah, <laughs> about her? No. 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 Not about her. About somebody else, though, right? Yes. Yes. It's Big news. Someone's uh, love life? Oh, I don't know that. Is that true? Uh, could potentially, yeah. We're working on it? We are, yes. Excellent. There you go. All right. 617. That was a good segment. 617. What do we talk about there? When you put uh, a headline in there, what is it? I'm not going to share facts. That would be, uh, we relive the glory days of Harlan Coben. There you go. Oh, good. <clears throat> That's my favorite cut so far. Well, I shouldn't say that. Recently, post, uh, post McLean. That's my favorite cut. I that, would say. Yeah, so now when you're feeling blue, and when so, you're down. Ain't no sin to be glad you're alive. I'll hear that. Uh, we'll hear uh, that cut. Where, yes. Uh, I don't know if we'll ever be able to recapture it, but that's where. Uh, well, I suspect there'll be some mix of Greeny interviewing Harlan Coben and Jerry interviewing Harlan when Coben. When does um, yes. a little bit among my guests in that area will be Harlan Coben. Well, I can, ah! I know my work over the years know that I've Hold on. Hold on. I want to hear. When does that start? When does the podcast begin? Probably post-Labor Day. Yeah, around the next couple weeks. Can I, I Jerry think. said what Greenberg, because I was laughing. I want to hear what Greenberg says about Harlan Coben. Because what did he say? He likes to read? Yes. He likes Let to read. Hear it. He's, he's written a few books. Without me laughing, I want to see if I can get through it. Oh, let me find the raw. Okay. And that's why he likes Harlan, because he likes to read. They're both authors. A couple authors talking. Yeah, a couple authors just shooting the breeze. Jesus. One guy who Some wrote. Some of you who know my work over the years know that I've tried to write books. I've written a few myself. I love to read, and Harlan Coben is one of my favorite authors. Some of you who he only know, has seven. Some of you know my works over the years know I, I'm, I'm an author. People who like Harlan don't necessarily like to read. You know what I mean? Like, he's an easy read, <clears throat> breezy read. Yeah, there are guys like that. Like, I, I literally, I texted him one time. I was at a hotel resort, and Mario. everybody at the beach was reading Harlan Coben. I mean, like six different people. That's, that's a every, good sign. That's not everybody. There were six people at the beach? It was not, uh, 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 to be honest oh, with you. Oh, Rich it, Beach, gotcha. It was at the pool. Oh, gotcha, yeah. At and, the pool, Rich Pool, texting the author. I yes. gotcha. No yeah, problem. that's what I do. Yeah, you did that cool. like on the 40th page. And I, I said, wait, you're supposed to wait on that. <laughs> Jerry, yeah, go, Jerry Greenberg. Yeah, he killed off the protagonist or antagonist in the 40th page. Crazy. Blew my mind. Crazy. He never, you know, you never get to sit back comfortably and know what's coming with Harlan. I know. I remember Dino would say he would have to read the, you know, remember he said one time, I wish we had it. He said, I have to read the book with the light on. That's what he said because he, I thought, well, you have to have the light on if you're reading a book, don't you? What do you mean? Because he was so scared at certain parts of the book. I don't think he reads other books with the lights off. <laughs> I guess. Is it or will it be on audio books? <laughs> I don't think it's that scary. He was scared. It's like it's like the time he was watching um, Seven at the hotel. Oh, right. uh, he had to put the chair in front of the door. Do you believe that story? Sure. So do I. It is scary. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Headlines with Curtis. It's time once again for Headlines. Carter, you sold the groceries before you have a chance to unpack them. <laughs> <Let's see. laughs> <laughs> what? Sure, yeah. Go ahead. Do you know Let's what it stands for, for? Mutt? Clarence Clearwater Revival. <laughs> See, I, I didn't. What is it, Curtis? I knew the R was revival, and there was a Clearwater. Clearwater. I don't know. <laughs> a little bit among my guests in that area will be Harlan Coben. Ah! Some of you who know my work over the years know that I've tried to write books, I've written a few myself. 
I love to read and Harlan Coben is one of my favorite it's authors. It's time for Kirk and Callahan's Headlines. You know, you never know. I came in today like, what are we going to talk? I've had a good time. Today's been fun, no? Some we haven't, we haven't even got to J.D. Martinez yet. because no. the, uh, the You story. don't have a good time today? Yeah, I'm having a fine time. I don't like you making fun of my man Harlan Coben. I, I can tell you're upset about that. I but not, that, as funny as the Harlan Coben thing was, and we'll get to, get to J.D. Martinez in a second. Headlines. Brought to you by Dr. Robert Leonard, of course, our great friend, and Dr. Matthew the Preston Mutz pal, Mutz in tomorrow. The Hair Doctors of Dave Portnoy, 1-800-GET-HAIR. The author of the book, Baseball Cop, and The Dark Side of America's National Pastime, Ebby Dominguez, joins us in about half an hour. Not, I mean, as funny as the, the Harlan Copa thing was, uh, Clarence Clearwater Revival will remain yes. the funniest moment in the history of the world. Can't, it's, can't it's disagree. Un, it, it's not toppable. No, it was just that or or uh, Rock the Cash Bar. Is it Clarence or Clarence? <laughs> Which one is they it? They thought it might have been Clearance Clearwater. Clearance. <laughs> but it was like, so perfect because you like said. Clearance sale. Because you turned over to him for some reason and said, do you know what, Mud? It didn't really, it wasn't his turn. The whole thing was just perfect. Perfect. Perfect marriage of stupidity. <laughs> perfect Clarence idiocy. Clearance Clearwater revival. <laughs> and Mike Greenberg and Amy Trask is a perfect marriage of just boredom and douchiness. Could you make it through that if it's an hour and six no, minutes? No, no. No, I'm telling you, I had trouble you're making it You're going to have to listen to that whole thing, Chris. Oh, I can't wait. I made it through Cullen and Bob Ryan, so I well, think first I of all, the this. best podcast ever is Curtis with Richard Dyche. That's the best that podcast is, ever. No, drunk Bob. Curtis. That's what I mean. I mean, that's that's we need some of that during Great the question. So, Richard, here's my point, and this is, <laughs> I'm so passionate about this. <laughs> passionate about what? Oh, I sound like I'm dying. Oh, he's belching up tangerine. It sounds like you have a friggin' s- four sausages in your mouth. I'm the best at what I do when I'm on my... <laughs> he can't listen. He just... That's oh, so uh, bad. That's not what I do when I'm on my game. I get an opportunity to talk to the lead media columnist in the country, and I'm hammered in my basement drinking gin. Was he calling like 20 times? Had to wake me up out of my stumber. <laughs> All right. Your stumber? <laughs> Your what? Stumber. stumber. Well, let's get to the big... Martin! D-bag in the history of We D-bags. have sound of this gentleman. Headlines oh, is hosted by Chris Curtis. Chris, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Go ahead. Cardinal Cupic. Is the biggest douche in Chicago right now? He's uh, not Chicago, on Earth. On Earth, in the history of Earth. So he goes to hell, right? I mean, there's no no question. Okay, he's going to go to hell. It's going to be hot there. He's going to be with Bill Cosby and Kevin Spacey and Jeffrey Dahmer and Zarniev's and this guy. Will Greenberg and Trask go to hell for this? No, but in hell you have to listen to that podcast. <laughs> oh, no, Greenberg I, and that's Trask. Not, that's not right. You're going to make Osama bin Laden do that? Yes. Jesus. All right. Go ahead. Well, let's hear from Cardinal Cupic yesterday defending Pope Francis for his lack of action with the. Um, latest sexual abuse crimes. The Pope has a bigger agenda. He's got to get on with other things of talking about the environment right. and yes. uh, protecting uh, migrants and carrying on the work of the church. We're not going to go down a rabbit hole on this. Oh. Oh. Now that is your, <clears throat> there's your I moment. There's absolutely your... rear back and, uh, and smash him in the face. Can I tell you why that's a... an old frail man? Can I tell you why I that's a good punch thing? punch him in the face. Can I tell you why that's a good thing? Because it's going to get people more angry and focused and more attention on it. That's what's going to happen now. Gonna so we, say, we believe Pope Francis, your guy, Pope Francis, the first pro-choice pope. First gay pope, yeah. Gay, we, <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know about that. <laughs> That's a good point. He, he um, <laughs> the first covered up sexual I'm abuse. I'm gay as a goose. <laughs> covered up another wave of these sexual abuse crimes. No question. And the Cardinal in Chicago thinks he can't get bogged down in that issue because he has to talk about Climate change oh, how this today? and the migrant crisis. Well, that's those are very. That is the most repulsive, offensive thing. What was the, follow, what was ever the follow-up heard. to that? It was just a news package. So it no, 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 no. You got to get to the follow-up. Is why people are picking on Pope Francis. Yes. Now this, I'm going to tell you the God's honest truth. I did not know Pope Francis was Hispanic. Uh, I didn't either. I, th- I thought he was Italian. I, I just assumed he was Italian or Polish. Or, I don't know. I don't care. But he says this clown. What's his name? Cardinal Kupic? Yeah, C U P I C H. His name is Blaze Kupic. Yep. Jesus. But it, this is the. Well, he says sound. the right. reason people are picking on Pope Francis this is because heritage, he's Latino. Yes. Well, let's hear that. We don't have that. Uh, we don't have that. Oh, I'm but, sorry. We don't have it. But, 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 but this but is it's what he said. But again, this is what happens when you have people who have never been connected to reality in their lives. Right. They don't know how to handle stuff like this. He's so, got to get on with other things. Intercom like handles climate, crisis better than like the freaking global Catholic warming. Church. It's unbelievable. The Pope has to get on and handle global warming. The hell with those children who are getting raped, raped and ruined. Families ruined, and this guy thinks climate change is more important for talking the Pope. about the environment oh. and uh, protecting oh. uh, migrants. Well, just wait. I mean, you know, all you have to. This is not hard to dig into. You want to just find any church anywhere. 
You're going to find out stuff that this stuff is never ending. I'm telling you, it's gone on forever and ever and ever. Probably isn't going on as prominently now as it did 20 years ago. I would say that, that, that all this stuff. I think people are more aware. Their eyes but, are open. But this will bring down Pope Francis. Mean, Pope Francis is just, he's one Pope of these Francis guys. Pope Francis is done. He's done. He should be done. He should be, be done tomorrow. He'll be gone by Christmas. Yes. yes. Oh, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. I think he'll be gone by Columbus Day. Mostly because wow. he's Latino. But, you know, also because he covered up sex Why crimes. Just, I, it's only because he's Latino. Why? Did he cover up sex crimes? <laughs> I don't even know what his last name was. How was he on the environment, though? Was he good? Oh, he's good. He's, good. he's, he's him for a week or two. That's that's what you do. What he's the worried, hell is, he's what worried the hell, about the migrants. What the hell does the Pope have to do with the freaking climate? What if climate? the migrants got raped by priests? Would he be able to get involved then? I assume they were. Yeah, on a really hot day. Yes. <laughs> yeah, if it's 104 <laughs> and a migrant is getting raped by a priest, he's stepping in. Well, on Columbus Day, I have the next Pope ready to go. Mike Pence, I think he's ready for the job. I think he has some of the characteristics. I could see that. And his yes, very pious man. He is righteous. a very pious man. According to a new book coming out, a biography of Mike Pence, Pence thinks that God is calling him to become president. Oh, well, absolutely everything that Mike Pence does is oriented toward him becoming president. Who is this? The, Friend of Pence's? His this the biographer. To accept Donald oh. Trump's offer to be his running mate. But it even goes back much further. By, by the time he left high school, he had decided he was going to be president of the United States. And as he rose through life, becoming a member of Congress and then governor of Indiana, he actually sort of heard in his being God's direction. And, and he thought that, that That's God was calling deeply him religious to now think. be vice president fake and, religious and function you know, as insane? president. You don't think that's insane? Like God is telling you you should be president? Yes, that's your calling. You ever heard that term calling? All right, we your have, calling. We have Pence's. We actually have. We do have Pence's reaction to it. All right, let me hear. This, this. is an unauthorized biography, so Pence doesn't like this biography. Yeah, got, we got right, sound the, right. The shadow president. What's your oh, Pence okay. right now? In the kitchen, there was uh, a great scene going on. It, after a while, it took like an hour or so. Sure, I understand. That. Loosen up, take some a more great shots. Great scene. Yes, where you uh, take off your shirt, Jerry, right mm-hmm. there. Oh, geez, Get a little okay. vodka. I think this was Grey Goose, maybe. Nice. Uh, pour it down your spine. And if you pull down your pants a little bit, a little bit, you can go down oh. your crack there. That's, That's the vice president with us. Incredible audio. We I just remember found. having him on. You I don't know? either. No, no. He's a radio guy. Though. He probably came. Maybe it was. Maybe it was. Does in that Super Bowl. sound interesting? A biography no. of Mike Pence. No, his name is boring. To, to Mike Pence's credit, well, that is going to be a boring well, book. I would say, like a real look at Mike Pence. I would read. See, but I'm, I disagree. Mike Pence, oh, I he might have that. some urges, but he's resisted them. He's a strong man. Oh, has he? Disciplined man. Has he? We'll see. Go ahead, Chris. What else? Chris Berman's family is oh, suing. Geez, oh, this story's geez, incredible. Jeez, jeez, jeez. Go ahead. The workers at Woodbury Restaurant no, saying. Not Chris Berman's family. Chris Berman's family, the, the victim. No, this is the. Oh, I'm sorry. The family no, of. Ed, Chris, yeah, it's not Chris Berman's. Right, right. There was a wrongful death suit being filed for the victim of Chris Berman's it, the, wife's. The crash. restaurant. I'll, serve, I'll, I'll, right. I'll do this. I'll do this. I'm suing the, the restaurant. Okay. okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. It's your job. Sorry. They, because they chose to continue. They chose to continue. <laughs> to, 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 <laughs> they chose to Come continue on. serving sorry, Mrs. Cap. Marty Berman. Smith was the guy's okay, name. Okay, Marty Smith. Okay. This is the story, by the way, of not only of <laughs> negligence, of drunk driving, but the story of a cover-up. A cover-up. And I know we all felt bad for Chris Berman. I still feel bad for the guy. His wife had... Catherine Berman, yeah. His wife had some serious issues. We didn't know about them. And uh, even in death, it was covered up. Well, I didn't, Rebecca, well, I, well, I didn't realize. Rebecca. This was a year and a half ago. We're just now finding out. It was out in May last year. She yeah. was wasted. But I, I didn't know. I just maybe I'd forgotten. This, I was thinking it was, because remember he was at the Mets he game? Was, right. Oh, right, right. So it was 2.15. I was thinking, you should, you should assume it was at night? Yes. Yeah. Usually I assume drunk driving is at night. I, I guess. I don't know why. She but, left Marketplace so his, around. His wife was hammered at 2 in the afternoon. 2.15 when she was and was drunk when she climbed into her 2003 Lexus, which is also kind of weird. Uh, she was behind the, uh, the, the victim's Ford Escape on Route 63. When in consequence of her intoxication, she suddenly, without warning, slammed into the rear end of the uh, car. She then drowned. Uh, she dr- cause of death was whatever blunt trauma and drowning. Yeah, they did not because re- she flipped over, her. went into a pond. But the amazing thing is the the victim, uh, and I I honestly have to apologize to this guy Edward Bertillis because he's eighty seven years old. When we first heard the story, I said this could be one of those elderly oh, driving guy's stories. Driving, right. This guy didn't belong behind the wheel, and no one in his family took the keys away. This guy Edward Bertillis, who was killed by Catherine Berman. 
um, was driving his 2003 Ford Escape. Um, after visiting his wife at the cemetery, something he did every single day. So she gets in her car hammered, leaving this place called the Marketplace Kitchen uh, at 2 in the afternoon and rear-ends him, kills him. Crazy. They're suing. I'm not sure why they're just suing the restaurant and not her or her family or her estate. But Maybe they be are, able, though. I don't know. They maybe they'll get to that. But And again, we felt bad for Berman and everyone, you know, hearts broke for Berman. But this woman killed a guy. Killed an 87-year-old guy, two in the afternoon. She's probably in a stumber, I would think. Total stumber. I would guess, no? Massive stumber, yes. It's Martin! <laughs> it's been brutal by me. Sorry, the Dram Shop Act it's is been, what it's called. The it's what? Been, it's been brutal by me. This headlines has been brutal. Anyway, let's save it with Mayor Walsh. He was on with... Uh, no, wait, hold on, hold on. Head, quick update, breaking news, if that's okay. Can we do that? This is legit. Do we, can we play breaking news here or no? You want to hold off? Let's do it now. Breaking news, please. Believe you. it's not breaking this news. No, is, is breaking news. Breaking news with Kirk and Callahan. At John Dennis, MAFL, probably not going to walk and carry 18 today. <laughs> so there you go. See, I'm blocked. I can't get that kind of news. Well, you can give me the Daniel Trotta tweets, and I'll give you the Dino tweets. So he's going to. Do I have do- lunch first at the club and then hit balls? He never. Uh, the ultimate question. He never rode in the cart. When I knew him. He always was, walked? Yeah. Really? We said he did. Oh, okay. You play with him a lot. He walked a lot. He had the ability, you said, he, he, somehow we'd always get lucky and his ball would be found. Yeah, he never woods. lost the ball in the woods. That must be never. nice. Some, some people just get Absolutely. lucky. Absolutely. Well, you live, you live a good life and you get those breaks. Yeah. Yes, sir. Anything else? He was fun to play with, though, because, you know, you had a few drinks, cigars. Yeah. Jokes, parrot sure. jokes. No. <laughs> we were all wondering why Mayor Walsh was circumventing oh, good, the, the country and visiting all these wonderful places. He was circumventing the country. Yes. circumventing the country, yep. Well, he was on NECN <laughs> and he explained why. But I'm traveling around like crazy, I'm huh? Gonna, a little bit, yeah. I, I was um, I was in Ohio um, and in Indian, Indiana, uh, Indianapolis, actually, for, for about... 42 hours, and, and I, was, I was in uh, Iowa hilarious. last week, and uh, just, you know, I, and people ask me, why are you out there? I'm watching what's happening in the nation's capital. Uh, I'm reading what's happening in the papers. No, you're um, not. I'm watching this country change, and I don't want to be a person that, when 2020 comes around, that, that I say I should have been involved more. Oh, jeez, thank God. Yes. Marty Wallace is going to get more involved. He was going to thank you for that, Donald Trump. <laughs> He's talking to and Iowa people. I have no idea who And he all is. those MS-13 you, guys you're letting sleep in the city hall. You know, he was in, Yeah, he was in Indiana. Not Indiana. Indianapolis, actually. Not Indiana. Right. There you go. 42 hours. Who's, who's the host that was laughing? I think it's Danielle Trotta. Oh, it's Circumventing the globe. Yes. All right, anything else? That's headlines. All right, that's headlines brought to you by Dr. Robert Leonard, Dr. Matthew Presti, the hair loss leaders, 1-800-GET-HAIR. We'll come back in 8.15. I'm looking forward to this, no? Yeah, I know. Me too. I think Me it too. should be interesting. I feel like we might make some news. Who knows? It's been a while, right? It's only been two days, right. so let's, let's give it a shot. Yeah, maybe we'll hang up in six minutes. Who knows? Well, I'm in the badger room. You know that. All right, we'll be right back. Oh, George Diaz. I don't think J.D. Martinez meant any harm. I don't think he set out to hurt anyone's feelings here. I just think he was for a better, you know, lack of a better word, ignorant or naive to what it really means. Right. You know, in, 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 in the best possible scenario, guys, I would like to see more people who make mistakes. And it's okay to make a mistake. It's okay to say I'm sorry. And it's okay to maybe seek someone out. There you go, Kirk. It's okay to say you're sorry you made a mistake. I agree. I agree. Just want, waiting for Brady to do. <laughs> here's, here's what I, I want I was to sorry. Explain this to me. <laughs> What is, there, you is there a mud cut for everything? everything. Every scenario? Okay, what? 3, or maybe I could ask, ask you guys, what should he apologize for? Nothing. I said that yesterday. He's nothing to apologize Obviously, for. Obviously, we, we all invoking, agree that invoking, invoking Hitler, Hitler is never a good idea. You can say I that. apologize. Thank you. But, you can but, say that. But he wasn't uh, supporting Hitler. No, quite the opposite. And someone asked him about that, which is funny. But I mean, he said he was doing just the opposite. He oh, was doing said? just the opposite. Hey, do we have that sound? Hold on. And, Go ahead, and, and you want to talk about revisionist history. These people, and I saw it on Twitter. I should have... Uh, met, you know, retweeted or whatever. Someone said that uh, it's historically inaccurate that Hitler um, encouraged more uh, Germans to arm themselves. A quick question from that historian: Did he encourage uh, Germans of Jewish, Jewish faith? No, I would say no. To arm themselves? <laughs> I'd say probably not. He took the Jews' guns away. That's the, why Hitler is invoked right. in that in in Second Amendment debates. Yes. Now, as obviously, it's easy to say. Leave Hitler out of everything. You're never going to win when you bring Hitler into the mix. But Except if you compare him to Trump. Well, that's it's different. Okay. Well, that's he's, I mean, Trump is worse than Hitler. Right. If he compared Trump to Hitler, do you think Trenny would have wanted him to apologize? 
No, she'd want to marry him. So she'd be the, <laughs> to be the to be the darling of America today. Are you kidding me? He'd be on ESPN. It, but, it, it calls beautifully calls out those people in the media who want athletes to speak out. Oh, I will to say, get political. He, he didn't really take a beating yesterday. Not really. No, and but he, I, I think it was great. I'm with you. He, he said, he very well. I, I don't I, want to do this. I mean, he mentioned his family in Cuba and, and Castro and. He's a Second Amendment guy. He truthfully spoke more than I thought he would on it. I didn't think he was going to talk at all about it. But then he said, I don't want to be a distraction. And he kind of summed up the feelings of a lot of athletes, including one Thomas Brady. Because Brady has plenty of thoughts. He used to share them with us. But now he doesn't want to be a distraction. He doesn't want to make headlines. Do you think wrapping up the press conference with Zig Hale was a mistake? I think it was a little bit much. Yeah, that was (laughs) defying. The, the goose stepping was weird, but you yes. know the tattoo like uh, Edward Norton and yeah, uh, he ripped American that, he ripped the shirt off. And, and, Hail yeah, Hitler! So. Hail Hitler! And then he, and then he curb stomped Bradford like uh, yeah, a little that bit was much. A little weird. No, but I would give him. He, he was did an excellent job yesterday, much better than I thought he would. Answered everything, gave good answers. Here he is on. They asked him if he regrets uh, posting in the manner that he did. Do we have that answer, Ken? Yeah, let me get that one. Hang on. Okay, good. That's a good this is, a, I think, a really good answer. He did a good job. Yes, and I, I don't think he regrets the way he feels. I mean, oh, he said he doesn't. He regrets being a distraction. Well, I would say that, you know, it's where he was raised, what he went through is a little different. Yeah, but they, that's not how liberals think. They don't care. They just, you know, they they want you know, guns. They want guns confiscated, many of them. Liberals care more, you think, about climate change than kids yeah. being raped by priests, right? Correct. Okay, just want to be clear. Go ahead. Do you regret posting the, the Hitler yeah. thing? Um, it's not, I mean, if anyone reads it, anyone will see that that's not what I meant by it. I meant the exact opposite by it. You know, if you read it and you see it, you know, it's, it's one of those things where, but, you know, I'm here to play baseball, guys. I'm not a politician. I'm not here to talk about politics. I'm here to help us win. You know, it was something that happened six years ago. And in this day and age, it's one of those things where you really have to be careful to talk about and stuff like that. And that's why I don't talk about politics. I don't want this distraction. You know, you guys are talking about something that happened six years ago. And, you know, I, I own the right because I posted it, and that's why I'm out here talking about it. But I'm worried about a championship. And I'm worried about winning a championship. And, you know, everyone here has a right to their own political beliefs, and everybody has Not a right really. to, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> to stand Now he's gone too far. Whoa, that's what whoa, whoa, America. whoa. You, a simple question. If he came out against uh, guns and, and, or against the Second Amendment or... For whatever, more gun control. If he, you know, retweeted David Hogg and said, "Let's take the guns away," oh, it would be a massive story. Would he be uh, vilified at all by anyone if he came out like against? No, a, with David Hogg. Yes. Oh no, but vilified by right. you. That'd be about it. But but it. Yes. yes. Yeah. To if me, he that's came, unacceptable. If Thank he you. tweet, if he tweeted some kind of silly meme comparing Trump to Hitler, you know, Trump with a Hitler mustache or Trump with a with a uh, armband or something. Well, I think we'd kill him. We'd kill him for it. But would the media overall would would Trenny be upset? Would Tomasi be upset? It'd be applauded. Would, of course, of course. It's as we've said many, many times. Ah. The media doesn't want don't want athletes to speak out. They want athletes to agree with them and then speak out. But That's you. All. But, I mean, you, you, who do you think is worse? And, again, remember, you're trying to keep a living. You're trying to keep your job now. Be honest. Who do you think is worse, Donald Trump or Adolf Hitler? I'm not going to say. Okay. I'm not here to be a politician. Right. I'm just here to do a radio show. But, I mean, you, I mean, Trump has killed millions and millions of people. Well, he's, go, he's, he's working on it. As Alex Rima said, we're moving more towards an authoritarian well, that, regime. That, that place in Georgia. Because they don't let anyone vote. Just like Auschwitz. In the black neighborhoods. That place that doesn't exist in Georgia is just right. like Auschwitz, right? Yes. 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 And, and they're killing, killing babies? You know, I think, you know, when Trump, you know, moved the, the, uh, Jerusalem, the embassy in Jerusalem, I think that was very anti-Semitic. Oh, yeah, it's true. And he is Obviously a, a Nazi. Cl- clearly a Nazi. Well, he, he's, yes, I think he's done some work in the Nazi When he took Georgia. that Through last... concentration rem- camps in Auschwitz. When he took Auschwitz, that last yeah. remaining Nazi out there of Queens. There is a mud cut for everything. It's amazing. Shipped everything. them back to uh, Germany. Auschwitz. Auschwitz. It is. I'm reading this book now, Sons and Soldiers, which is great, about young Jews that escaped Germany. Is it good from the start, though? Is any boring backstory? Is it jump right in? It's good from the start. All right. Because I can mean, I read it when you're done? Sure, but okay. you'll you won't read it, or if you if you like it, you I read. Won't admit I read it. all the time. You know, I tell you things to I'm read. I'm like Greenberg. Read I read books. You read books. You don't yeah. write novels. We do what Dino doesn't do. Read. You don't like novels. You don't like. Uh, that's not true. I don't. I don't love novels. You I read that a hole Stephen King, but you don't oh, read Harlan Coben. I told you Harlan Coben's in this new Stephen King. I don't book. care. I don't care. You I can, told you that. You can't make me read Stephen King. Why? Because he's a liberal. He sucks. Yes. Okay, I love should, to read. But you should stop doing now from now on. 
Don't watch any TV, music, or movies that liberals make. Okay? Knock yourself out. Okay. Congratulations. Holland Combs is a liberal. Enjoy, enjoy Greg Gutfeld and the Oak Ridge Boys. You have a really nice, fulfilled <laughs> life. Ted Nugget. And Ted Nugget. And <laughs> Ted Nugget. <laughs> Ted Nugget. Another, it's, it, all, it all goes through Mutt. Everything goes through yep. Mutt. Is Mutt, do you, is the most cuts you have of anybody Mutt or, or Curtis? Mutt, by far. Oh, really? Yep. And Curtis second or no? Yeah, Curtis second. Dino third? You know third, correct? Okay. You know what's you know what's a phenomenon, or I should say a dynamic that never ever ever goes away, never leaves my my being, my mindset, my my thought is how mind boggling Nazi Germany was. How mind boggling, you know, the Third Reich, the 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 final solution. How my it just blows your mind every time you read about. Well, it's it. crazy, but like it's there not- were this many. Evil people. Well, you know what's nuts about it is like I remember talking to Kate about it last year because she was doing some some now in school for the first time, and saying there are people who are still alive. You hear stuff like that, you think it was like a thousand years right, ago, right? Like your it was par- it, my, this, this happened. Well, not your yeah. parents, but my parents. Your, your, yeah, your parents were alive. Were alive. I mean, in and obviously Hitler was elected, but after that, it just you know took rights away, and I mean they weren't Jews weren't allowed to go to the store till five o'clock, right? And there was nothing left but rotten fruit. They weren't allowed to, you know, hold uh, their own property, to hold jobs in the government. And, and some of them were World War I veterans who fought for Germany. Right. They That's lost nuts. all their rights just because they were of the Jewish faith. I wish you could stroke a wand and say, racism I just, abolished. I just Thank got you. to the chapter where they liberate Buchenwald, and they walk in, and they just cannot believe that bodies on top of Some were alive, some were dead. Some, they gave them food, and some ate themselves to death. Because it was not, they'd been so famished, so right. starved that they doctors were saying, "Don't you can't," and they just ate they until just they died. whatever died of whatever. Jesus. And and you th- and they went to this chapter I just read is fascinating because the uh, God bless the U.S. military went in the town started asking people questions and they said, "I don't know what's going on," like a mile away. What do you think? You know what they did? They made them. They had a burial. For all the victims at Buchenwald, they made the townspeople dig the graves because they were neglectful and ignorant, and they just said, eh, we don't know what was happening in that big old camp. What do you think of Barnes? Who's Barnes? In the 8th. Oh, disaster. Okay, good. Can't live at 93. Trying to get the important stuff. You, you, get, the, you get the two-seamer up. Yeah, oh, you can't. Well, you, you, you can live in ninety three, but you'll be living in AAA. Oh, sure. Enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, not for long. You're not eating steak. You're living in ninety three. No, that's that's why they call it the NFL. Not for long. <laughs> right. Changeup has been tremendous. He's not throwing the ball with with great velocity. <laughs> <laughs> He's a liar. All right, I'm looking forward to this. He's coming up next. Eddie Dominguez. We talked about yesterday. We started the show talking about it today. This book. We're gonna. I mean, we're gonna ask these guys all. We ask this guy all the questions. These uh, baseball cop, the dark side of America's national pastime, linking Ortiz to a guy gambling his best friend, gambling against the Red Sox. There's Manny. There's steroids. There's Jared Remy. A whole bunch of stuff we're gonna get to with him, and he's up next.